So you just ordered a Roto Boss rotary for your Thunder Laser and you're wondering what to expect. Let's go through it. All right, so when you get your Roto Boss rotary, it's gonna come nicely packaged with this uh, like compressed, I don't know what this stuff is called, but they air seal it so it's tight right around all the parts. Nothing is getting moved, nothing's going anywhere. Get a nice thank you sticker here, all the contact info, anything you need, all on there. Right, here's your accessory box that you get, Rotoboss rotary attachments, setting the standard since 2019. No joke, they have amazing customer service, they're always there to answer questions. Any issues, they will help you resolve it right away. Open up the kit, got a picture right here and a big caution saying to remove this orange red uh, thing here. This is the part you're going to need to remove. It's going to be down on one of these feet over here. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe it's for shipping pur purposes to make sure it ships better or something, but you need to remove this. Big, huge. It may just damage your rotary if you don't. Bunch of stickers. Got another thing here to get to the ma manual. So you will have no problems finding your manual. And a level so you can level out your mugs, cups, whatever else you're putting down there. Uh, once you're using it, and you got some extra pieces. Here is a double two wheel rotary. I'm not exactly sure where this goes to be 100% correct. And you've got just a few extra random parts I've never used, so I don't know what they're for. Maybe we'll have to do another video on using these parts. Extra wheel. Who doesn't love some pretty gold gold bears? And some cool roto ball stickers next thing we're going to do is go through setup and getting everything hooked up to the laser and running it I'll fire up the laser and get everything ready but before we do that i'm going to go ahead and take this guy out of here because you don't want your laser head crashing into it oh yeah there would have been a crash the laser on laser head out of the way got our roto boss in we're going to go ahead and get everything hooked up with the Rotoboss rotary inside your laser, you're going to want to make sure this motor side is to the left side of your machine. We're looking at the laser from a little bit of a different angle. You can see right here we have our control panel. Down below that, there is a rotary plug-in. Right here is where you're going to want to plug in your rotary. With our rotary in, plugged in, laser head out of the way, we're going to go ahead and lower the bed. So at this point, we're just lowering the, the bed enough so that the laser can get over top of the rotary without crashing. To make sure you have your Rotoboss inside your Thunder Laser correctly and aligned right, what I do is I use this little red dot from the laser. You can kind of see it on the screen here, but what I do is I line up the little red dot inside the center of this piece here and then also the center of this piece here. And then once I do that, I know I am square to the gantry and then everything will come out nicely when I engrave it. I use this little red dot that comes out of the laser head. See the red dot here? I center it on this little block here. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but I try to make it as best it can centered there. And we'll go ahead and we'll move over here and make sure it's centered on this side as well. So now we're centered on the left side. Let's go back and check the right side to make sure we're good. Still centered there. You can check through this knob there or in the center of this one. I do actually think we might want to come a little bit this way. So it'll take some playing with. So I think we're centered there now. Go back and check this side. Looking good over there. All right, so now we have the Rotoboss in place. We are good to go. All right, now let's jump into Lightburn. We'll go to Laser Tools, Rotary Setup, and then we wanna to change to a roller since we're using a roller rotary. If you scan the QR code for Rotoboss, you can then go to their link there and they have all the settings for a bunch of different lasers. So there, I just put in the input settings for the Thunder Laser. Then we're gonna go ahead and make a one inch by one inch square to go ahead and start running our tests on. Since this is a powder coated stainless mug that I'm using, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Thunder Laser 100 watt library that I imported and choose the Navy Tumbler option. Once we assign our Navy Tumbler settings to our layer, we can go ahead and set our origin. 
since we're going to set our origin where we want it in the laser, we're going to use user origin. Rotary plugged in, aligned, set up in Lightburn. Now we need to fin uh, get ready to set up for engraving a mug. One thing that I have learned with testing cups is you can use regular old aluminum foil. Now we can go ahead and test on this cup without actually engraving the cup. Get another piece of tape. Close it. You have a lot of options for adjustment here. You have this uh, wheel here that will adjust this up and down. You've got a wheel here that will adjust this side up and down. And then you've got a wheel on this end that will adjust the length of your mug. So I know my mug is a bit longer than the last one I did, so we're gonna open that up more. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna have to put this one down a bit too, and you can see it's nicely engraved here. It says up, and there's an arrow pointing that way, so you know which way to spin it if you wanna go up or down, which is not necessary, but just a nice added feature. So when you load your rotary, you've got this spring-loaded wheel here. What this wheel is for, that goes inside of your cup, your mug, whatever you're engraving. And what that does is it keeps it held down to the wheel so you get a nice perfect spin as you're engraving. So go ahead and lift that up. We're gonna put this silver lip right on these wheels here. Level that came with the rotary accessories. So the level has two nice feet on either side so it sits nicely on the cups, mugs, whatever. All right, so we're centered on the clamp here. Slight shift, we're centered there now. We'll double check the other side. All right, we are good to go. We're gonna engrave the square that we just made on Lightburn and make sure that that square comes out exactly one inch all around. And then that way we know our settings are correct. We've already sent the square, loaded it up in here. What we're gonna do next is set our origin. We have our laser head right where we want it. We're gonna go ahead and set our origin on the controller. Now that that's set, we will start engraving right where the laser head is. Last thing we need to do is get focused. So we'll use our little piece of acrylic there. I like to raise the bed up, then you can go ahead and loosen your head, let it drop to the acrylic, and you should be perfectly in focus. First guess, it doesn't necessarily look like a perfect square to me. So yeah, we are not at an inch that way. This way should be an inch, but it is not. So let's double check light burn. So, so I just checked light the light burn, burn I noticed was I that I didn't have a one inch by one square, square when I did it. So it's because I didn't press the unlock button actually and the height and width were attached to each other. So be sure that when you're doing your setup that you make sure you're so actually let's get her back using in a one here inch again. square. Then over here you can look at the settings for the rotary setup. You're going to start with the settings that Thunder recommends for you. But as you're using it, you're going to want to adjust those. So if you don't get a perfect one inch by one inch square, what you're going to want to adjust is the roller diameter or the steps per rotation. You may have to play with these settings a little bit to get it exactly right. And when I say play with your settings, I really mean play with your settings because look at all of the squares that I engraved on this mug here just to test to get that one inch by one inch square. When you're testing, you're going to want to either adjust the steps per rotation or the roller diameter. 